people who actually want to take a chance and check out my vlog. Um, if anybody's new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Um, me and my best friend decided to go ahead and take our trip. If you've been following my channel, you noticed that we've been booking and f trying to figure out this Walt Disney thing since last um, February, I want to say. February, December. And we ended up having to unfortunately cancel our trip that was supposed to be in July because of lovely COVID. Um, me and the same best friend decided in October to just go and risk it because you know we've been social distancing and taking the proper precautions and it's open so we figured to take advantage of the limited capacity rule which turned out to be utterly amazing um yeah some people may be thinking oh should i risk it should i not risk it i decided to make this vlog to hopefully um help you make up your mind because at the end of the day, a lot of us have been under the stay-at-home orders. A lot of us have been working through the stay-at-home order. So we've been, you know, some people may be considering, I need a break. I need a break out of this house. I need a break away from everything. I want to just go have fun. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you only live once, you know. So uh, that's what me and my best friend did in October. Um, she came to visit me. And we just decided, hey, we love Christmas. We love the holidays. And what? why wouldn't anyone want to go to the most magical place on earth on Christmas? Um, so we notified our families and our jobs. And we decided to start booking um, our Walt Disney trip. Which, because um, we already had reservations and things like that, it was actually very easy to book everything because we already had tickets. We already had things in motion before. So, whenever um, we decided to do the airport and fly, we, of course, you know, there were some new travel anxieties um, that we experienced. So, we took the proper precautions of bringing loads of hand sanitizer, loads of antibacterial wipes. Um, we even brought hand sanitizer spray, Lysol, and everything of that nature. So, um, when we got on the plane, we used hand sanitizer, we wiped down our seats, the window, Everything we touched, everything we decided to touch, the tray tables and everything. Even when we arrived at our location, we um, even sprayed down our suitcases. Like we really went above and beyond to social distance and keep everything clean and sanitized. Because, you know, you just don't know. So, um, we end up doing lifts because the airport, I mean, the, not the airport, the, um, hotel we just, we had to, uh, unfortunately stay at last minute, did not have a shuttle. Um, one of the things that we ran into is when we, um, in October we booked an Airbnb, but the first week of December, um, uh, our Airbnb had to actually cancel our reservation due to COVID reasons. They wouldn't elaborate on exactly what happened, but they were nice enough to give us a full refund. So we were able to book, um, a hotel in a very timely fashion um in my opinion for um it being like a week before our trip we got a great deal um we ended up getting a suite which was two queens um with a sofa bed um desk and all that stuff you know microwave refrigerator things like that um we ended up staying on the third floor and the our hotel is right outside of the walt disney resort area so like our commute to walt disney world Every day was like five minutes or none. Like it was really, really, really short. So I was very happy about that. Um, on arrival day, we ended up doing um, some things, some activities because um, our flight was super short. Um, it was supposed to be like two hours, but I think it was like an hour and a half. So we had a lot of time to kill that we didn't expect to have. So we ended up going to the Titanic Artifact Exhibition which was cool we ended up going to disney springs and we ended up going to the outlets and we ended up eating dinner at disney springs um the whole um hotel thing was interesting because we were notified that if we wanted maid service it would only be per request so that way they wouldn't have um, different people going into our rooms, which we liked, but we didn't like because we were like, oh, well, we're going to have to make our bed still. We're going to have to empty our own trash. So it was kind of like a, a factor of the ordeal because most people want, you know, that free breakfast and the whole, you know, being catered to aspect of a hotel. 
and with the whole um the whole breakfast thing as well um you know they were encouraging social distancing um so only a certain amount of people could go into breakfast at a time so it kind of made the breakfast ordeal a little bit longer and then because we had social distance the seating was a little bit um restricted so that was a kind of a downfall and then another thing that me and my best friend noticed was yeah people were being very considerate towards each other in regards to you know only two people kind of in the elevator at once unless it's like a family um but we also noticed that the um, hotel staff and management were picking and choosing when to encourage face mask like um, when socializing they would tell some people to have a mask but then some people wouldn't have their whole mouths and nose covered um, we also noticed that some um, they had signs saying oh make sure you have a mask on at all times you know take off your mask when you like reach your area such as the pool but we saw people walk around barefoot, no mask from their room to the pool and no one said anything or kind of reminded about it. So that was kind of a downfall. And also we noticed that um, some of their cleaning would fall off a little bit. Uh, we noticed like some trash would accumulate or like um, uh, just stains or I don't know how you would put it would um, appear and we like on buttons and stuff and we noticed that the buttons weren't wa uh, weren't wiped down. Um, another kind of negative on arrival day was the Titanic Museum was interesting, but for the money they charged was like 25, 22, 25 um, dollars per person. We just didn't feel like it was worth that much because of um, how much it lacked. It didn't have um, a lot of, of uh, basically things for you to see. Um, a lot of it was pictures, which I understand, you know, it is the Titanic, you know, it sunk. But if you're going to charge me with $25 and the main thing you have is just basically taking pictures of us with green screens and stuff like that, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, you shouldn't charge people that much. Because a lot of it was replicas, replicas, replicas. And we're just like, ah, is this supposed to be an artifact exhibition that I kind of want to see more of the real deal instead of just pictures of things or replicas. Um, one high note was the character warehouse. I wish I would have, um, had more footage of the character warehouse because a lot of people don't realize you should go there first before you decide to go to Walt Disney World because why spend $24 on a magic band when you can go to the character warehouse and spend $7 and they still work as good as the new ones because what people don't realize is everything at the Walt Disney World Resort end up at the end of the season getting sent to the character warehouse and you get to buy everything like 50 to 70 percent off so if you want something in December, you're like, oh, I love it, I love it, but 60 bucks, if you wait till it gets to the character warehouse, it could be 20 bucks. Like, you save so much money. I'm all for buying souvenirs, but I'm also very, very frugal and getting more out of my money. Like, I bought my magic bands from there. I bought some um, Disney-themed face masks from there. I only end up spending, like, 24 bucks, and I got, like, six things. Um... Disney Springs is a lot as another um attraction, I guess you could say, or place that a lot of people don't talk about. But Disney Springs was amazing. We ended up going there twice on our trip because um they have so many stores. Like like it's just Disney Springs is so massive. Um they have a bowling alley, movie theaters, a Coca-Cola store, and then their restaurants are delicious. We ate at the T-Rex and um, another one, I think it's called Par Paradisco or Paradiso. Um, they have really good food there too. The restaurants are just amazing. The staff there in store and outside the store are so helpful and so nice. That's one thing me and my best friend noticed about Walt Disney World. Their staff are amazing. No matter what, they're so helpful. They're so nice. And... um. That's just a change it for me because usually some part of your trip you meet people who are just, you know, kind of irritated all the time. But um, our first day, which was um, a Monday because we traveled on a Sunday, um, was Universal Orlando. Now, I've been to Universal Orlando. If you've looked at some videos on my channel, I have been here. Now, honestly, my experience, um, my first go around was way better. Now, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's the added pressure of the pandemic that had me on edge, but it just seems like, um, Universal at this time, 
They're not really encouraging social distancing. It was very crowded. I don't know if they were acting in limited capacity. I, I, from what I understood, they were supposed to be. But it was very crowded. Um, nobody was encouraging or reminding anybody to wear a mask. So there was like numerous times where um, me and my best friend noticed people walking around with their mask pulled down. Now they did t- they did have um announcements saying if you're going to you know eat or drink you know step aside um you can eat you can pull down your mask and eat or drink when um you're not moving so you saw a lot of people sitting down on the ground eating or drinking um sodas or whatever they're drinking which I thought was kind of a downfall because I'm like uh if you're gonna encourage that you need to have more tables and benches out. Like there's a you can social distance people without having to take away the tables and benches, which I noticed um, a lot of those were removed. Um, another thing that kind of bothered me was um, in the lines, uh, they were kind of wonky, and I know they do they're rerouting the lines to help with social distancing, keeping people apart, but um, it'd be all like their lines would be separate, separate, and spaced out until you got closer to the attraction and then it seems like we were all bunched up again so you really weren't social distanced um i didn't see honestly a lot of cleaning going on but no um the only time i saw um real cleaning and wiping down was at king's cross there's an employee there who did a phenomenal job i I, while i was waiting in line for about an hour um I saw her clean the railings maybe four or five times, which made me feel better because I was like, you know, you do see people touching it or little kids kind of, you know, playing with it, putting their mouths on it. She was thoroughly wiping down anything. I wish I would have got her name so I could have said it, but she was the only one I saw the whole day we were there and we were there open to close who actually was wiping down stuff. Um, same with... Um, uh, the whole store, the shops and things, they were... I saw some stores that they were... Um, making sure it's limited capacity and some of them were rude about it like if we would walk up and say hey um can we go in um it took us a couple of times to ask in order to get a response which i thought was funny um but then once you got in the store it was crowded people were not really respecting each other's space or social distancing so that was an- another whole ordeal um another thing about universal is their rides shut were shutting down a lot And that kind of put a hindrance on things um, because, you know, they were only open for a limited amount of time. So there's some rides that my best friend, which it was her first time, she didn't get to ride. So I was kind of sad. But um, I'll give them this. When they did shut down and you were in the front of the line, like it happened to us, I think, once or twice, they would give us these little cards where it was basically a fast pass so we could be first on another ride. Um, another thing that they tried that I didn't think was fair or worked was their virtual queue. There was no information or instructions about their virtual queue because we wanted to ride the Hagrid ride. We ended up not being able to ride it because every time we checked it, it was full. And then the one time we got in, their uh, Universal app glitched to the point where um when we tried to reopen it to you know reserve a spot it was already full so that was kind of a sad sad time because we were like that was the only ride that we didn't really get to ride that we really really wanted to ride besides hogwarts but hogwarts broke down but um it was kind of sad because we're like oh well we want to ride that one but there was like no way to do it and i remember the last time i came um they didn't have a virtual queue so it was just, you know, waiting in line or buying the whole fast pass thing. Um, another highlight was um they did um they did have a parade. Um they only had one parade and it was the same one throughout the day. So it was awesome because I was like, yo, yay, we finally get to see a parade, even though, you know, it's COVID and they weren't supposed to social distance. But during the parade, people were very respectful to each other during that time to not stand too close. Um but uh, remembering the King uh, the King Kong ride, that was one ride while we were waiting in line that was not socially distanced at all. Um, yeah, in the very beginning it was, but then as you got closer to the attraction, people were just bunched up. 
same went for Hogwarts, same for um the Fast and Furious ride, um same for like a nu- numerous rides where there was no encouraging the social distancing at all. Um what else? Um we got to go into the Moe's um Moe's bar, which was awesome. They that um attraction was very well socially distanced and very clean. The people in there were wiping down things constantly and were constantly reminding people, hey, and they had little signs that said this table is blocked off, you know, we're encouraging social distancing and everything like that. Um at the end of the night when it closed, we ended up going to the Hard Rock Cafe. Um the dinner and the dinner was there was phenomenal um the wait staff was you know very timely and quick um the hostess were very very nice to explain how things work now they end up giving you like these little um cell phone beepers so instead of you waiting near the ho- uh the restaurant i mean you got to you know walk around and then your uh, little beeper would go off so similar to normal but it was that was nice to know um so when we went to um magic kingdom um we rode the ferry there to you know make sure we were social distance because we 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 were going to take the uh, monorail but the line there was so long and people were were just so bunched up because it was cold don't get me wrong it was cold but um i really admired the ferry the ferry um workers or drivers or um castmates because they had the dots on the ground they incurred social distancing they made sure your mask were on and they got us there safely in a timely fashion um walt disney world compared to universal was on it they had they their numerous castmates i saw were reminding people to put their mask on they let people know if you do not have your mask on and you refuse to put your mask on you will be kicked out no if ands or buts you will be kicked out. They very, very much um, encourage social distancing. They would walk up to you and remind you to social distance. And it was never in a rude way. They always said it very kind, very sweetly, kind of like a, hey, please put your mask on. Please make sure, you know, your mask is covering your nose. Hey, can you step back a bit? We're trying to encourage social distancing. I loved it. That made me feel safe. And that made that portion of the trip that much enjoyable um and their um their app was very 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 helpful where it came to their map um their maps their mobile orders because um at walt disney world right now they're only doing mobile orders so that way you know um we're not bunching up to order food um one thing that people should know is park reservations go for everything Park reservations go for entering the park. They go for dining reservations. They go for ride reservations. That is something I feel like they did not really notify us about until we got there. Because there's certain things we wanted to do. And we found out later that in order to do them, you had to book that reservation 60 days in advance. Now, if you remember, we barely booked our uh, ticket, re- like our park entry reservations, barely 60 days in advance. So anyone trying to go, at least right now with um, these certain guidelines in effect, book everything 60 days in advance. I wouldn't even take off from work unless you can secure a park reservation first, period. That's just something you should know because we didn't realize any of that until we walked up to do something we're like hey you know where's the line they're like oh do you have a park reservation and you know we're thinking yeah we have park reservation we're in here you know you have to have a park reservation to enter the park and they're like no you have to do a dining reservation or a ride reservation as well so some of that was kind of saddening but we are when we decided to take this trip we knew there is going to be some changes that we just weren't notified for so of course we're going to have to go to lovely walt disney world again once all of this blows over hopefully soon but you know um i wanted to share that with people so if you're planning on what's what's some of the things that you need a park reservation for (sighs) um Park reservation for, um, inter- oh, as you can see in this picture, um, everyone was wearing masks, 
and social distancing and being awesome. But um, you need for dining. So if you want to stay, if you want to um, sit there and eat at special restaurants like the Cantina in um, Hollywood Studios or make a, um, a lightsaber or make a droid, you need to book those reservations in advance. Oh, another fascinating thing that I loved. Um, I don't know if they did it before. I said, I haven't been to anything Disney in many, 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 many de- decades. But to, inc- to help people keep social distancing, they had the markers on the ground. Like if you can kind of see in this picture where those people are standing, they have the social distancing markers on the ground um, for their lines. And then on top of that, they had people standing uh, at the end of at the end of the lines with the name of the ride um, on like a pole that the cast member was holding. So that way um, you could always find the end of the line without having to, you know, kind of go up to people and ask. I love that because every time we'd find an attraction we wanted to go on, we would sit there and say, oh, where's the person with the pole? (laughs) So once we found them, we knew, okay, now from this point on, we just follow basically the, the social distancing markers on the ground. They had those social distancing markers on the ground for everything, where it came to the bathrooms, where it came to uh, mobile orders and trying to eat somewhere, stores, and rides, which I loved. Um, And they had cast members throughout the line attraction to encourage social distancing and things like that. So that was awesome as well. Um, A lot of the rides were open. Um, A lot of the attractions were open. Um, Like, a lot of people said, oh, they're not going to have... they're not going to have parades. They were very creative. You got to see cast members, but it was usually from an attraction second story. Like at Magic, was that Magic Kingdom? Like at Magic Kingdom, we saw Chip and, um, Chip and Dale at um, the second story of the Country Bears ride. We saw Chewbacca and Stormtroopers. They were either on a stage or they were on the second story of a building waving down so that people could take selfies if they wanted to. Um, what else? Um, uh, parades. They had, um, Santa Claus and the whole Christmas parade at Magic Kingdom with Mary Poppins and Donald Duck, Daisy, Mickey, and Minnie. That was really cool. Um, it was like two separate parades. One was near Frontierland and the other one was near, oh, I don't remember, but it was near the Haunted House, attra- Haunted Mansion attraction. So that was awesome. Um, they still did shows. They just social distanced the shows. Like every other row was closed off. And that was throughout every park. Um, like the Hall of Presidents, that was open. Um, the Country Bears was open and social distanced. Um, Bugs Life. Um, I mean, it's tough to be a bug. Was open. Like a lot of, a lot of attractions were open. The only things that weren't open was a lot of the interactions. Where you got to touch things. That's what kind of put a damper on animal kingdom but like you see um like the uh was it not jungle cruise but the um safari ride in animal kingdom they had these cool little plexiglasses that they installed so we social distance to get on the ride and then a lot of rides at disney um have lots of plexiglass like if we were close to each other waiting in line like in the line itself you'd be social distance but like left to right there'd be plexiglass or it'd be a whole row empty so i really love that because compared to universal there was no plexiglass it was just you were standing right next to someone but at disney they made sure to um put up plexiglass um a lot of the dance party, like I said, a lot of the shows were open. They just um, social distanced everything. So I thought that was really cool. But some of the interactions where you can actually um, like talk and touch things and and people, that was closed. Um, so a lot of the sing-alongs and certain things like that were closed where they needed cast members to actually perform. Those were closed. Um, the, bird, the bird show was open at... Where was that? At Animal Kingdom. Um, interesting um, show. But um, it was nice that they had that open. But, you know, a lot of... Uh, like, don't get me wrong. Not everything was open. A lot of attractions were still closed. Uh, um, like, at Hollywood Studios, the whole... Um, what's it called? Indiana Jones Spectacular was closed. Um, the... What else was closed? The, um, 
uh, my mind's going blank right now. But I mean, even though certain, certain interactions were close, um, the stormtroopers who um, came out were phenomenal. They still interacted with the crowd and talked, but they did it from a distance, which I respected. Um, you could still ride the Millennium Falcon a long, long, long wait because you know they're they're letting people um, do what their comfort level. Like one of the cast members let us know, hey, you you might be joined with another party in that enclosed space but there's plexiglass and so forth but if you do not feel comfortable you have the option to say you want to ride by yourself which was awesome because um when it came down to it me and my best friend weren't comfortable and when we told the cast member hey we kind of want to ride alone she was cool with it she said okay well we'll let them go first and then you'll just go next and it was easy Um, we found out about the whole ride reservations thing when we tried to ride Rise of the Resistance. Um, we had to have a queue for that. The first queue session, which was at 7 a.m., we were not able to get into, but we were able to get into the 1 p.m. um, virtual queue, which we ended up riding, um, about close to closing because you're kind of in a backup group. Um, I will say this. If you do plan on going to Walt Disney, um, park... Walt Disney Resort um, stay gives you way more benefits and gives you more privilege. When I say by that, when I, what I mean by that is if you stay, um, it still goes by, if you stay off site like us, you only get 30 days um, in advance um, chance to get reservations. But if you stay at the resort, at a Walt Disney World resort, you still get privileges. You get first selection on the virtual queues. You still get the whole um, shuttle aspect. You don't have to worry about lifts and cross-contamination. Free breakfasts. Um, you get. You still get uh, fast passes. They will not... S- well, this is kind of a theory... But they will. They are not selling fast passes right now because of the whole limited capacity. But we did notice that people had fast passes. So from what we kind of overheard from another guest is that Walt Disney Resort stay people still get fast pass choices. So we found that kind of interesting because if we would have known that, we would have just bit the bullet and stayed at a resort. But again, we were trying to get more for our money, and we always find it that when you travel, you're not really going to stay in the hotel. So why spend so much money on the hotel if that's where you're just going to sleep at? You just need somewhere, you know, clean, safe, for you to lay your head out and, leave, and for you to leave your stuff at, but not to the point of spending money that you could spend on experiences. But if we would have known about the whole, all about all these privileges that Walt Disney World Resorts really offer and we could have took advantage and are actually worth it during this pandemic time in our eyes, we would have just booked there. But, you know, come see, come saw. You live and you learn. We already made a pact that the next time we go to Walt Disney World, we will um, just stay in a resort. But as you can see um, on this clip, how everyone is social distance, how everyone is wearing their mask. And this is a full-blown show. Like, the show was about, I think, 15 or 20 minutes long. And it went phenomenal. The cast members set, uh, seated everybody make sure you know make sure they're socially distanced even um some of the cast members when they came out they were still wearing their mask um the little bunches that you do see those are families so if you had a group of six they was like okay it's cool you could sit there if the, if it wasn't um possible for you to sit together they would let you know in advance hey if you're a party more than four you're gonna just have to separate sorry for the inconvenience but that's just how it's working at this moment I mean, another thing that um, I also liked about Walt Disney is um, when you walk into the park, they, um, well, not even walk in, as soon as you walk into the property, they do temperature checks. So you have your, um, your temperature check first, and then after that, you have your security check where that one was kind of interesting because um, you kind of walk through this thing, 
that kind of scans you and then depending on what they see um, they have to physically look through your bag which every time they've had to do it they were very nice very respectful but when we tried to um, prep for it in regards to the next day we couldn't figure out like how to make it go smoother because on one park they would say oh it's your Polaroid camera because I have a Polaroid and then on the other end my best friend had an umbrella. So sometimes they say, if, you know, if you have these things next time, just take it out and walk with it in front of you. So we would do that and we would still get flagged. And we'd be like, what is it now? And then sometimes the guy, you know, the guys or the security people would be like, oh, we don't know. It's just when we see this type of image, um, we have to, you know, pull you aside and look at the back. So I was like, cool. Um, it is what it is. So after security, then you go to the ticket area, and the ticket area was very smooth. They had multiples open. They had multiple um, little areas open, so that way, you know, no one would bunch up, and, you know, you got through the line very smoothly. I said, um, we really enjoyed um, the fact that social distancing was seriously encouraged and enforced, but it wasn't done in a forceful way. Every time we were in a line, we had plenty of space between us and the other person, um, see, um, even though we didn't have a park reservation, my best friend got to make a lightsaber. They had, um, like kind of like a backup area where you can make, um, more of the plastic ones, which was still awesome to me. Um, you know, considering the fact we just didn't know to make that reservation. So we were bummed, but then, um, we, our spirits got lifted when we saw that, oh, you can, you know, make this one instead. Um, you still couldn't make a droid, but they had the droid kits where you can do it at home. So that was pretty cool. But see, even, ki even kids were encouraged to wear um, face masks. Everyone was spaced out. Um, you see the little lines on this ride where, you know, everyone's spaced out where, you know, you have plenty of space. Um, interactions um, with stormtroopers, as you can see on the ground, you still had your markers. And then what you don't see, I think, I don't know if I recorded it, but a cast member will come up to you and say, hey, you need to back up. Remember social distancing, please. So that was cool. They still allow you to bring your own water containers. Um, there's just not really anywhere for you to refill them right now. So we would always refill our waters at the hotel before we left. Um, you can still bring backpacks. You can still bring snacks. But again, you cannot eat or drink in the lines. Um, cause of course, you know, you have to take your mask off. You have to kind of just go off to the side to, um, consume anything like that. Um, as I said, everything, everything at Walt Disney, they try to create as much normalcy as possible. Um, so, you know, all cast members were wearing masks. Um, all of them had, uh, oh, that's another thing that Walt Disney does. Before you get on the rise, um, they provide hand sanitizer. So, whereas, um, I noticed I used a lot less hand sanitizer when I was at Walt Disney World because of the fact that they provided it. As soon as you get closer to the attraction, they give you squirts of hand sanitizer. Um, and they also have hand sanitizer posts, like, everywhere, so when you get off the ride, they have them right out where you can just, they're automatic ones, you just put your hand under and yeah, it'd be hand sanitizer. And it was always the good kind where you can smell the alcohol cleaning your hands. Um, so that was pretty awesome. Um, they also um, had, was all the restaurants, I, if I remember correctly, were open. Um, all the stores were open. Um, and they had the whole social, um, social distant markers in the stores as well. So that way no one bunched up on lines. Um, oh, another thing that me and my best friend noticed was that there, honestly, we ended up buying, we, we brought masks because like I said, we came prepared, but it's something about, you know, like the mask you buy at Target and Walmart Amazon or Etsy, they're kind of made out of cloth. And we noticed, um, at least our first day that the mask we brought weren't fit for amusement parks. Cause either it was too thick where, you know, we sweated more than we normally would or, um, on rides it would kind of shift. But the, um, the mask we bought, because we bought a mask at Universal, and we bought a mask almost every day 
from um, Walt Disney World. The masks that the theme parks are providing are amazing. They're only like $8 a piece. At both parks, they're about $8 a piece. But it's like the fabric they use, it's, it's easier to breathe through. Um, but it's not thin. It's not like, oh, it's thinner fabric, you know, so that way you can, you know, think germs or whatever can get through. No, not at all. It was very, very well made. But it just seems like the fabric that they use, you could breathe more. The straps were better for your ears. They were um, kind of thicker stitched fabric. Um, so, um, you know, fit comfortably around the ears. Um, and then they wouldn't shift. Because, you know, we had to keep our mask on on rides as well. I mean, naturally, you know, because you're still around people. And, you know, everything's all airborne nowadays. Um, but it wouldn't shift, whereas the ones... Because I, I bought my mask from um, Target. Yeah, all my masks came from Target. Her mask, I think she ordered them from Etsy. So, they were, you know, good quality masks. But I noticed mine would shift, or I just felt like I couldn't breathe really whenever I was um, on a roller coaster or something. So we ended up saying, you know what, we'd rather be comfortable. And we bought the mask from the gift shops. They have a lot of different um, designs. And yeah, their mask are just awesome. Um, my first one was a Gryffindor mask because that's my house. I'm a Gryffindor. And um, all day I had been complaining about my mask shifting and moving and just, you know, I had to, it's just, it wasn't comfortably on my face at the park. Now, mind you, I've worn these masks before this trip. I buy, I buy most of my masks from Target because I like the way they fit, you know, when I wear them to work, to the store, or things like that. But it just seemed like at the park, I couldn't, it was just not comfortable on my face. So, I ended up buying the Gryffindor mask at Universal. And as soon as I put it on, I could breathe better. I rode it on like three or four rides. It did not move. It did not shift. It was perfect. Um, since I've been back... I've washed it in the washing machine, and it's it it it's still like new. I love it. I wear I wear these more than I wear my other ones now because it just it's more securely on my face, and I can breathe better. And it just it feels like kind of lack of a better phrase. It feels like it's part of my face now. So um, we thought it was just you know universal thing. You know their rides are a little bit more vigorous. So when we went to Magic Kingdom, we wore our mask again. You know, because we had got a special mask for this trip. So we um, put on our mask again. We rode, I think, the Peter Pan ride first. After that, we rode It's a Small World. Again, we were uncomfortable. <laughs> we felt like it kept shifting. So then, we were like, you know what? <sighs> Let's go buy a mask. So we went to the gift shop, buy another mask. And every, like, it was like three days in a row. We tried our mask so hardcore. But every day, by like midday, we were like, ah, let's go buy a mask. We couldn't take it anymore. So the last um, the last couple of days, we said, screw it. And we just wore the mask that, um, that we wore the days before. We just washed them thoroughly the night before and sanitized them before we wore them for the, the following days. So if you can, again, when you get there, when you arrive at Orlando, go to the character warehouse at the, um, I believe it's called the Premium Outlets. They have face masks there too. And they are cheaper than buying them at the parks. And they have basically the same ones at the park. They're just cheaper. At the parks, about $8, if I remember correctly. Um, at character warehouse, it's like five bucks. And if you just, if you're just a real good planner, you're like, no, I like to have all of my things before I travel, which is kind of like us. We like to usually have everything we need. Before we get there, Character Warehouse lets you order online. They let you do orders online so you can ship them to your house, which I'll probably end up doing because there's a lot of stuff there that I wanted to get, but I wasn't sure because I'd never been to the parks before. Then now I'm like, oh, I'd rather buy it from there. So I'll probably buy some more Magic Bands. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but that's something you should know. Um, you can sit there and order your mask from Etsy or order your mask from, you know, but the masks at that they're selling at the parks are just so much better for your face for what you're doing there and it was easy it was easy to pull down to eat and pull right back up uh, i didn't feel like i stretched it or anything like the next day or the next time i wore it, it still fit securely on my face which is what i loved um what else um the weather them um, that we experienced there 
was very hilarious because when we got there, it was um, kind of warm, you know, where you could just wear jeans and a short sleeve. But then once the sun went down, kind of got chilly. Um, by the midweek, uh, it, I believe it rained. Yeah, it, no, it rained when we got there. It rained that night. But then the next day, it was still warm. Um, by that Monday, it was pretty pretty chilly, pretty cold. So we wore jackets, but then it warmed up, so we were to put our jackets away. Um, and wear short sleeves and tank tops. Um, by the time we got to Wednesday, it was a um, Tuesday was another warm day, uh, kind of chilly at night. Wednesday was um, we thought it was going to be cold, but it was very humid and warm day all day. Thursday was cold, um, and Friday was cold. Like Friday was freezing. Thursday was just cold. Where once the sun came up, we were okay. But Friday was just cold all day to the point where I had to buy, um, cause I didn't take any, um, beanies or anything with me because it had said it was going to be like 70 degrees all week, but it wasn't. It ended up being like 32 degrees on, on Christmas day. So, um, she ended up buying gloves. I ended up buying a Santa, a Mickey Santa hat to keep my head warm. But thankfully we had like, we had brought long sleeve and jeans just to be on the safe side. Um, what else is there to express? Um, I said Pandora was awesome at, um, Animal Kingdom. Um, I had watched vlogs prior to this trip, so I had already known that, um, Pandora Day and Hollywood Studios Day, those two days, you do not lollygag, you do not, you know, procrastinate. On those two park days, you head straight to the attraction you want to go to. So for Animal Kingdom, we headed straight to Pandora and both waits for those two um, Avatar rides were 30 to 35 minutes, which was awesome. Um, Same for Galaxy's Edge and Hollywood Studios. We headed straight for Galaxy's Edge. Um, For the Millennium Falcon, we only had to wait. We only had to wait 50 minutes. Which, compared to Universal Studios, hour and a half waits was nothing. So, we were fine. Um, What else? Most of the wait times were very, very low because of the fact that we were under limited capacity. So, which is why we decided to go. Because we were like, we'd rather um, do our newbie experiences um, under limited capacity than under full capacity. Where it's all crowded and annoying. So, there's that. Um, What else? Um... One thing that we noticed was that with um, with Universal Studios, going back to Universal Studios, um, anyone who's war- who's ridden the Hogwarts Express in the past knows that in the past they used to pack you in those train cars. Like, it'd be six people in those train cars. Me and my best friend, we had a whole train car to ourselves. Now, with that being said, it was nice, but with that being said... That is why your line is, your wait time is so long for the Hogwarts Express now. I mean, before, um, your wait time would be, like, when we, like, last time I went, it was, like, June 2015, 2016. The wait time was, like, nothing. You'd walk and then maybe be in waiting 20, 30 minutes. Basically, for just the amount of time for the train to get from point A to point B. But... Uh, with the pandemic and them trying to accommodate parties, like I said, me and her had a whole train car to ourselves. They didn't put anybody else with us. Um, we were we still had to keep our mask on, even though it was just us in that train car. But um, we waited in that line for like, whew, I want to say an hour and a half, two hours. That line was long to the point where we didn't even want to ride it back. Because we're like, we did not want to sit in that line. Because we had um, uh, a virtual queue um, reservation at the other park that we had to meet. And there was no way we were going to meet it in 30 minutes when we had to wait two hours through there. So, new dice. They still do the Olive Anders, um experience. Uh, my friend, my best friend got to, um, you know, get her wand chosen for, chosen for her. And as you can see even in the video, they're still trying to social distance while interacting 
And the cast member there is, of course, um, wearing her mask. Everyone at Universal Studios did wear their mask. I give them that. Um, even when it came to assisting people with um, doing spells throughout the park, they had, you know, so social distance markers. And then the cast member wouldn't be standing right next to it anymore. They're kind of standing in the area and kind of helping you from afar. Um good thing about that is some of the cast members were kind of nice about it some of the cast members weren't too nice about it um like one, my my best friend was make it was doing a spell and trying to figure it out and this cast member just kept repeating what to do rudely to the point where she didn't realize he was talking to her until he repeated it the fourth time kind of more gruffly and then she turned around and was like oh i didn't know you were talking to me so, I don't know. It would have been nice of you to say, hey, you know, um, why don't you try this instead of just repeating what to do? I don't know. Kind of cool. Um, one thing that I liked but that I didn't like is you could still, you know, buy apparel. But people were still trying it on before they buy. So, with that being said, people were still putting their germs on clothes and things. And nobody was stopping them. Nobody was stopping them. Like, honestly, I'm guilty of doing it as well. I took a picture with a Goofy that I was considering um, buying. And honestly, um, when I walked up to it, I didn't know if I'd be able to pick it up without purchase or anything. But I was, and nobody said anything. Um, you could still interact with the Transformers. They do still come out, and you can still take a picture with them. You just can't stand as close to them. So that was kind of interesting. Um, what else is there? Um, oh, photographers are still taking your park pictures, but the only downfall is you still have to wear your mask. So they're still charging full price for these pictures, these park pictures where they're professionally taken. But I don't know. Whenever we got, we did get our pictures taken because we were going to see if we wanted to, um, you know, purchase our first time being at Walt Disney World. And when we saw the pictures via the Walt Disney app, I was like, I'm not spending $112 for this picture when you can barely see our faces. That goes with the ride pictures as well. Um, it, was, it was still awesome and funny to see our faces uh, on roller coasters and rides. But we were like, I don't want to buy it because like half of our face is cropped off so you can't really see anything. Um, another downfall about the whole picture ordeal is that, um, is that um, what's it called? Um, if anyone's been before, usually for the escape of Green Goth, you get a picture. You take a picture before, and then you get a picture. You get to purchase the picture at the end. They are not doing pictures at um Universal, so um that was kind of sad. Not, they were doing. They weren't doing any ride pictures, which I was like, oh, because I, I I think uh, if I remember correctly, you get a picture taken at. Um, Green Gods, and you get a picture taken at, um, I think the Mummy ride, and at Men in Black, I think, yeah, on those three rides, and you really, unless you personally bought a photo pass, you don't get to see those pictures, with they, which, um, when you're entering the park, they don't even remind you or tell you anything about that, so that was kind of a downfall. Oh, I, that's something I completely forgot to talk about, the entering of Universal was catastrophic nobody knew what was going on they tried in the beginning to separate people but um the security checkpoint was terrible it was very confusing it was not social distance everyone was bunched up they tried their hardest to social distance people but it just didn't work um the whole the whole ticketing thing when you ask cast members do i go here do i go there if i have tickets they didn't even know it was just very confusing. So hopefully if you go, they have figured that out because um, as of December 20th, it was a mess. But all in all, would I say taking the trip for the holidays was worth it? Yes, it was a phenomenal break away from reality. Um, even though you had to wear your mask, the fact that we were traveling and we were having just genuine fun, it was a nice mental break. Um, so when people ask me, did you have fun? I'm like, yes, I had fun. It was nice to get away from home and just try new experiences like um, I love doing. It was nice to be in a just, just a different area. 
especially during the holidays because I mean most people are like oh I want to go see my family but they couldn't go see their family so I was like I rather travel with my best friend and you know one-on-one kind of contacting because at the end of the day we were in a hotel room just us two hanging out geeking talking about our experiences of the day um very social distance of course <laughs> And then it was nice to, you know, see someone that you hadn't seen in about a year because of the whole pandemic. So that was nice. Um, it was nice to be able to do it because, you know, our jobs were okay with it as long as, you know, we took the proper precautions. And it was nice um, to have a trip that was already paid for. Because, again, this didn't come out of money that we needed right now. This was a trip that we had already planned and booked. And thanks to everyone's policy, we were able to rebook without any additional cost. Our only additional cost was the hotel because um, it was more exp- it was more expensive than our Airbnb. And um, it was a whole different ordeal. So it wasn't like we could use our credits or anything from that. We had to pay a little bit more money. And, you know, we had to, um, with that being said, we had to have extra expenses like a lift every day. But... It was still it was still a great trip. We were out there for um, about a week, and at the end of the trip, when we t- you know we always reflect our trips, and we were like, was it worth it? Yes. Did we have a great time? Yes. You know, um, will it be better the next time? Yes. But for what it was during this time, I say it was worth it because it wasn't crowded. I felt safe. You know, thanks to the Walt Disney um, uh, company they really made you feel safe and clean. And at Walt Disney, everyone was wiping down things. Everyone was spraying social distancing, encouraging social distance, encouraging masks. Um, as I said, if you're thinking about it, I say go because it's worth it because Walt Disney World is going to take care of you. Universal could, you know, step it up a notch. But at the end of the day, that was the first day of our trip. By the end of the day, by the end of the trip, we were in simple bliss not wanting to go home so if this helps i hope it does i hope this also um maybe inspires you to subscribe to my channel but all in all thank you so much for watching and don't forget to explore